a writer for the respected British military journal Jane's Defense Weekly, found out about John Hutchison's work through one of Lockheed Martin's top scientists. So I was at Lockheed Martin, I was with Boyd Bushman, a senior engineer there, and he showed me a film that purported to show some of John Hutchison's levitation experiments. What we saw was a saw, some nails, a hammer, you know, household stuff. Most of them were shooting off the top of the screen. It was almost like an impulse reaction. Normally I would have kind of looked at this stuff and just thought it's somebody idea, somebody's idea of a practical joke. But the fact that it was being highlighted to me by somebody, of, somebody from Lockheed Martin as something I should be paying attention to kind of got my attention. And that was what really convinced me to go and at least have a look at what John, John Hutchison was doing. I'm 99% convinced that this is not a hoax. I don't think anyone knows what is going on here, but too many people have looked into it, too many people have investigated. You know, people who have my respect for me to think that it's a hoax. Eventually, Lockheed Martin would send their own team to conduct tests. But John hasn't heard much since, and he worries about his technology being used for military purposes. Well, the prevailing belief of the time was that the vacuum was a thin material fluid, the so-called material ether, which we know today is false. The ether is there, but it's not the observable material fluid. Faraday had re-established this notion of lines of force, but he thought the electromagnetic field or the electromagnetic disturbances in the ether, so to speak, was really twanging strings. The strings were under tension, and when you had a disturbance, what you really did was pluck the strings. Now, Maxwell states very clearly that he set about to actually capture exactly what Faraday was doing in his lines of force in the theory, and that's what he did. Maxwell's actual theory is 20 equations and 20 unknowns. In quaternions, which is a higher topology algebra, you can do things in that that you can't dream of in doing in tensors. And you certainly can't do in vectors, and you certainly can't do with the theory that's taught at our universities. All that remains to be rediscovered and uncovered. The term vacuum has been used in several totally different senses. Uh, some engineers use it to mean you just pump out all the air, and that's called a vacuum, and that's vacuum technology. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about empty space-time. We know today, for example, the Lamb shift in quantum mechanics showed that th this exchange of energy between the vacuum and the charged particles is in fact real and generates real effects. And you can measure it, and he was given a Nobel Prize, Lamb was, for doing that kind of measurement and showing it in the physics literature. So we know it's real. Experimentally it's detected. The Casimir shift, for example, shows clearly that it's there, and it does generate energetic effects in your actual materials. It turns out that in the modern view, the modern quantum mechanical view, if you apply that knowledge that's been gained there, what you find is that the vacuum is fiercely active. It's a fierce energy flux and going in all directions at all times. The energy density of that, as estimated by various physicists, is extremely high. Uh, so the, the energy that's there is extremely dense and extremely fierce. This drives everything that we call physical reality, from the quantum level right on up to the observed level and the observed world that we live in. Everything is energetically driven by the vacuum. And so he produced uh, magnificent breaks, Hutchison did, in metals and splits as if it were Venetian blinds. And uh, another thing it does, since this stuff comes from the nucleus out, it doesn't go through the electron shells, its medium is the nuclei. Uh, what you have then is you have changes in the atomic nuclei and which result in lattice changes. You have the production of alloys which cannot be made in this world with natural pro with normal processes and some of those alloys appeared in John Hutchinson's work as a result of that kind of bombardment another thing you have is uh, once charged with scalar radiation the, and the nuclei then continue to discharge over a long period of time and so the material continues to change alloy form and so forth over a period of even a year and you had those changes occur in his work also he was reproducing and has been reproducing uh, some of the work in the Tesla and even some of it going further. But that's what he's doing. What he's doing is real. And uh, unfortunately, most people regard John Hutchinson as being a little bit off and not really understanding electromagnetics and not really understanding a Tesla coil. Nothing would be further than the truth. He's doing the real electromagnetics. 
He's doing kind of electromagnetics they don't know anything about. He's doing electrogravitation and real Tesla work. Hutchison's more dramatic experiments border on the paranormal and have generated more than just a passing interest from U.S. military research labs. We've had about 750 demonstrations of levitations, translational movements, uh, metallurgical samples falling apart, uh, changing into transmuted unknown metals. Uh, quite a variety of obscure types of effects, wood impregnated into uh, metals, other objects in metals, uh, monopole uh, magnetic fields written up in many journals. Um, quite a host or a Pandora's box of different types of effects on the outer edge of, of the scientific uh, community. Now when we analyze that we find that there's a um, position versus time graph that we can plot and also the velocity versus time. But when we actually analyze the um, acceleration versus time, it's uh, an increasing straight line. So we're forced as scientists to admit that we have a third derivative effect, which um, for my mind actually lends itself to an anomalous new force, which I call hyperforce, uh, because we have to take a derivative of that to finally get a flat straight line constantly increasing acceleration. So the Hutchinson effect has been used as a benchmark for a comparison to many other high voltage propulsion devices. Electrogravity in other words. Yours truly, John Kemp Hutchison, rather unshaven and sexy looking. <laughs>